President Biden just told the allies that the U.S. will support efforts to train Ukrainian pilots on F-16 fighter jets. Zelensky desperately wants those planes inside his country. We have team coverage beginning with CNN's Natasha Bertrand at the Pentagon. Natasha, tell us about this announcement. The U.S. will support training on the F-16. What exactly does all this mean? Yeah, John, this is a really significant announcement here from the administration, and it really marks a U-turn for President Biden, who just a few short months ago had said that he did not believe that Ukraine needed F-16s at this time. Well, now he has told G7 leaders there in Japan that the U.S. is prepared to join a coalition of countries to train Ukrainians on fourth-generation fighter aircraft, which includes F-16s, that will begin in the coming weeks, this training will, and it is expected to take several months. But this had really been up in the air about whether the U.S. would actually support this. A lot of European countries do have a supply of F-16s and they have expressed a willingness and a desire to send them to Ukraine. Of course, Ukraine has been pleading for the jets for several months, but it was not clear whether the U.S. would approve the transfer of those jets, which it has to do because of sensitive U.S. technology in them. Well, now, not only are we told that the U.S. is prepared to allow the allies to export those jets, they are also prepared to join this coalition of trainers who will be instructing Ukrainian pilots on these jets in Europe in the coming months. This training, importantly, is not expected to actually happen in the United States, uh, but it will happen uh, in Europe and it will happen in conjunction with some of these European allies who have been pushing uh, for this kind of uh, training and provision of jets to Ukraine, including uh, the Netherlands and the UK, John. All right, the U.S. not providing the jets exactly, but approving the transfer and most importantly, buy-in on the training. That is a major development. Natasha Bertrand at the Pentagon. Thank you very much. Let's go now to CNN's Mark Stewart, who is with the president at the, G, uh, uh, the G7 summit. Mark, I have to say this announcement about training on the F-16s, I think, eclipse in importance the other things that have been going on there. But when Zelensky arrives, he'll be greeted with this information and some other information he'll like. Well, the information that he will certainly like and had been hoping for was an agreement by the G7 leaders to really beef up sanctions against Russia, an effort to quash and destroy the funding component, at least, of the Russian war machine. So today, a big announcement on sanctions, and really we can divide it up into two different categories. First, things. Expect to see sanctions on manufacturing, things such as transportation, um, uh, any kind of material effort, uh, material item that has been crucial, that has allowed Russia to thrive. In addition, the U.K. just today announced that it will prohibit uh, Russian imports of diamonds. So that is going to be a, a big attack mode right there. And then expect to see sanctions on individuals, either people who hold leadership positions in Russia or perhaps who have wealth who have been able to contribute uh, to the funding of the, Russia war, the Russian uh, efforts in, in Ukraine. One final note, John, when President Zelensky comes here, not only will he meet with members of the G7, but also other invited nations, India, Indonesia, Brazil. Those are nations that also could impact uh, the Russian war effort, particularly on an economic front. So expect to see some of that to come up in conversation as well. So F-16s, F-16 training, sanctions, and big meetings with other important world leaders. This is indeed a big weekend for President Zelensky. Uh, Mark, terrific to see you in Japan. Appreciate it. So as the president and these G7 leaders work on these sanctions on Russia, Vladimir Zelensky, he is traveling thousands of miles for this personal pitch for support. His first drop in Saudi Arabia this morning. Um, a remarkable journey from Kiev. We had a map that shows just how far he's going. He meets with the crown prince in Saudi Arabia before going to the G7. Seeing as Nick Robertson is following all this for us. And Nick, as we said, this is turning into a very fruitful journey for Zelensky. It is. Uh, the meeting with uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman big. It was at Salman's invitation. Uh, Salman himself wants to have a bigger role in regional politics and in particular uh, diplomacy and helping bring peace to Ukraine. He said his foreign minister to Ukraine a few months ago, several hundred billions in, in humanitarian aid committed. Also, uh, there is heavy investment between from Saudi Arabia in Ukraine. There certainly was before the war. And Saudi sees itself as part of a solution maker, has been 
involved in getting prisoners released, particularly foreign prisoners. So this is something that's big for MBS and for Zelensky. It really allows him to get under the skin in the Arab world, in the Gulf states, uh, with Putin's narrative, which is quite often accepted there at face value, that Ukraine isn't really a country, it's really part of Russia, that Russia is actually uh, being attacked by NATO, that this is Western hegemony. Putin's message sells pretty well on the Arab street and places people believe it was well, Zelensky's uh, ability now to speak to the Arab leaders and in particular Mohammed bin Salman has huge value in disrupting Putin's cell. More friends, potentially, more help and support going forward. But I think what we're hearing from uh, President Biden, from uh, G7 allies and partners that support Ukraine, particularly about the F-16, this narrative has been going on for a little while. It's been gaining momentum. The British a few months ago said they would train F-16 pilots. A couple of days ago, the Dutch and British prime ministers said they would launch an initiative to help Ukraine source these F-16s and get pilots trained. But I think this reflects, perhaps President Biden's shift reflects a real ground reality here, John. And, and the ground reality is something we've been seeing. Every frontline commander we speak to here talks about a lack of ammunition. And when you come into this, you think, hey, maybe this is just part of shaping the information message. We need more help. But after a period of time here, you begin to think, maybe this is genuine. And I think there's a recognition that when the tanks were authorized for Ukraine, by the time they get to the tanks, this much talked about a big offensive here hasn't started. When the West says we'll give you tanks and when Ukraine can put them into action takes a lot of time and Russia gains advantage in that time. So the recognition that F-16s are actually need, Ukraine has said it needs them. But the reality is they do need them to win this fight now, this summer, against, against the Russian military. I think that message is beginning to sink in. Ukraine needs to win this summer, and it needs all this equipment now. That is something that is, that, that is, is my takeaway this period of time. We've had closer front lines here in Ukraine. Yeah, promise is one thing. Action, a completely different matter. Nick Robertson, great to have you there. You and your team, please stay safe. Cedric Layton is a CNN military analyst and retired U.S. Air Force colonel. And good to see you. Um, F-16s uh, high on the shopping list for President Zelensky. Why is it significant that Ukraine receive these jets if they can? And what sets them apart, right? Why would they be a game changer possibly in this conflict? Yeah, Paula, the F-16 is a really interesting aircraft. It's been around for about 49 years. 40-plus uh, of those really operational, and it is a multi-role fighter, so it can do both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat operations. Uh, so what that means is it's really versatile. It can be used in many different ways, and it also is a, an aircraft, depending on how it's configured, it can potentially uh, use its electronic jamming capability to go after some of the Russian radars that are active in Ukraine and around the Ukrainian periphery. So it's a very important aircraft. It's probably the best aircraft in terms of all the different capabilities that the Ukrainians could want. And it's probably the only aircraft that has all of those capabilities in one package. Now, when President Zelensky has, you know, asked for them, the United States has said, no, definitely not, at least not yet. Uh, EU allies, some of them seem to have a different policy, uh, especially in the last few months. Now, I want to point out that CNN reporting is that the Biden administration has now signaled to these allies that, look, if you guys want to go ahead and give them these jets, export these F-16s, we may not stand in your way. Is this a huge policy change for the United States? Yeah, it's a policy change by, uh, you know, little steps, little incremental steps. And uh, what it really means is that uh, the Biden administration is giving its tacit approval uh, to its allies to provide these jets to the Ukrainians without any objections. So I, what can happen here is that the pipeline is going to start, and that pipeline includes uh, everything from the aircraft itself to spare parts, and of course, most important here, training for both the pilots and the maintenance crews that are going to have to maintain these aircraft.